Okay, at this point you've already selected the species of native plant you want to draw using the Calscape website, and you've collected a few photographs of various parts of the plant that you want to draw. You can see that I've already sketched some very light lines to guide me and make sure that everything fits nicely on my page. Now you're ready to start your observational drawing. Drawing from observation means that we're trying as hard as we can to draw the shapes that we see. Take your time, slow down, and just keep looking. Look, look, look. But don't expect it to look perfect when you've drawn the shapes because it takes a long time to develop those skills. Just have fun with the process and do your best. I sped this video up 2,000 times faster than the actual clips, so keep in mind that the actual artwork that you're looking at took me several hours to make. Drawing from observation requires a lot of patience. Once you're done with the drawing, you're going to want to color it in. I recommend using color pencil or watercolor. I'm actually using watercolor pencils for this one. But you can use any kind of color media that you feel comfortable with. Here's a quick tip for getting a natural looking green. Most of the greens that come from the tube of paint or from the color pencil, if you're using color pencil, most of them aren't dull enough to be the greens that we find in nature. A lot of times we feel like the greens in nature are really bright, but compared to pigments of paint or color pencil, they're not, they're not that bright. You need to dull them down a little bit, and I prefer to use a little tiny bit of red to help dull down those greens so that they just don't look, um, well, like toxic waste or something. Usually neutral colors like browns and grays incline towards one of the rainbow chroma. For instance, this stem is inclined towards red. So if I just used brown, it's not gonna feel right. I had to put a little bit of red into that brown. Um, these leaves are inclined a little bit more towards yellow, so I'm mixing yellow into them. I'll still be adding a little bit of red to these leaves to tone them down. Okay, now for the berries. This should be fun. I'm leaving a little bit of uh, the white paper for a highlight. Notice how the berries in the photograph have um, a bright highlight. I'll be putting in some yellow to uh, give that highlight the, the chroma that it needs. But first, I'm just sort of gonna let the paper help me a little bit. I love watercolor pencils because you get to be really precise in how you apply the pigment, but then it's fun to watch it kind of melt as you add a little bit of water to it. I'm starting to add a little bit of background color to mine, and you don't need to do that for yours. I just decided to do it for mine because this particular shrub is very dense, and I thought it might give a, a feeling of that, that density of foliage, the density of the leaves that this, this particular bush usually has. Also, another thing that I was thinking was that, well, the flowers of this shrub are white and they don't really, you know, they don't really pop out from the page if I, uh, you know, if I don't have some sort of a darker background. So that's another reason why I'm doing this. I'm making a clump of leaves up here, again, so that the viewer can have a sense of what this plant looks like when you encounter it in nature, because usually the leaves come in a dense clump, like uh, what you see at the top of my drawing here. Remember that one of the purposes of a botanical illustration is to help people recognize an example of the plant in the wild. 
Okay, well, for the next few minutes, I'm just gonna let the video roll while I finish up the coloring and painting. Um, I'm gonna layer in a bunch of different colors, not just using one color. For instance, this dark shadow, I want it to be a warm dark shadow. So I'm using a variety of different colors in, in the shadow area, not just black. Um, anyway, I'll let it roll and then I'll drop back in again with some additional information. Now I'm putting some shadows on the bottom of the round berries. That's going to help them look round, having this darker shadow on the bottom, and maybe a little bit along the sides. I realized I forgot to draw in the seeds, so I found an example. I had to look this one up on a Google image search because I couldn't find any examples of the seeds on the Calscape website where I found the toy in. I'm using a combination of black, brown, orange, and yellow. Now we'll add some more taxonomy information. The common name of this plant is Toyon. The scientific name of this plant is Heteromeles arbutifolia. I'll also write the genus, family, and order. And now I'll label the individual parts, the seeds, fruit, leaves, flowers, buds, Sometimes a plant might have more than one common name. This one actually has several names. It's also called Christmas Berry because it looks a lot like European Holly. Now it's not really European Holly, but another name that is common is California Holly. And actually, uh, the word Hollywood, the name Hollywood, comes from this species. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoy making your botanical illustration. And remember, it should take a lot longer than this eight minute video, which was speeded up a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.